In the first segment, I read to you from a book that a member of the Church of Christ wrote a while back. I, during my tenure in the Church of Christ, I came across this book. It's by Mr. Brownlow. And he cites all the scriptures and puts it very profoundly uh, why he's a member of the Church of Christ. I'd like to follow up in another pattern, not completely different, but it was a little different from Mr. Brownlow's. I, can't, I come from a media background. I was in on the ground floor when the government was prosecuting Jimmy Baker. Well, they went after uh, a former teacher, uh, Dr. Gene Scott, that took over the only original Christian television network uh, to be founded. Anyway, uh, they tried to prosecute him, but I joined with the congregation and we signed a mandate for Dr. Scott to resist the incursion of the First Amendment right under the Establishment Clause that the church is not part of the government. We as people are the church and we tell the government what to do by contract. The, the government can't vote no law and then try to make a law that's not supposed to be a law. Anyway, I come out of that media background and after long discussions with my biological brother, now my Christian brother, uh, he read to me from First Peter also about giving an answer to the question of the hope that resides within us all Christians. And in that, it says, you're baptized by, you're being saved by getting baptized I'll read it to you, but I'm trying to go by memory. Not as a washing of the flesh, but as a good conscience toward God. Well, after, after serving under Dr. Gene Scott, uh, I understood that the first time Dr. Gene Scott baptized me was the same at, well, it wasn't, it wasn't him personally. <laughs> it was Dr. Gene Scott's father that baptized everybody. And realizing the importance of baptism, I felt then that I secured my salvation. Well, when the apostle came upon the followers of John the Baptist, he asked them, wherewith were you baptized? And they said, with water, like John the Baptist baptized. And the apostle said, well, were you baptized with the Holy Spirit? And they said, no. Well, that's a discussion I entered in with my brother. And he pointed out that when you go down into that watery grave and you come up out of that watery grave to walk in newness of life, you receive the Holy Spirit, then you're added to the church. Well, I, how do you know that? Well, he says, just go in the book of Acts. Look at the question that they asked Peter when the New Testament church was founded. They asked him. After he told them about Jesus, they were pricked in their hearts, and they said, what must we do to be saved? And he said, be baptized, all of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive the Holy Spirit, and you'll be saved. You'll be added to the New Testament Church of Christ. And the idea is that you 
continue in the New Testament Church of Christ because you're added to the body of Christ. Okay. I want to get started now. I want to, I want to read to you. From, let's see, yeah, I want to read to you from his book. Now, I read all the, I read all the opening statements, and that was from 1 to 25. Now what I want to do is I want to begin the series by reading to you all the scriptural references he has. Remember I read to you reason one, because it was founded by the scriptural builder, Jesus Christ. No church can be scriptural unless it was founded by the scriptural builder on scriptural principles. The fact that a religious body exists is proof that it was founded by someone. There is in the world today a multiplicity of churches different in origin, doctrine, and practice. Therefore, each was either scripturally or unscripturally founded by either the divine or a human builder. Hence, it is important to know whether the builder of a church was scriptural or unscriptural. If a church was founded by an unscriptural builder, that church must, of necessity, be unscriptural, the work of man and not the work of Christ. You know, uh, when Jesus referred to his works, he referred mostly to the miracles he performed, which was by God's approval. In proof of the above statement, we quote the words of Christ in which he promised to build the church and upon this rock I will build my church, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18. Therefore, it is certain that no church can be scriptural unless it was founded by Christ. If a church was founded by Henry VIII, John Calvin, John Wesley, Joseph Smith, or anybody else, it's a human church. It was founded by a human being. That church is unquestionably human. Jesus, in keeping with his promise to build his church, gave Peter the authority to state the terms of admission into it. Hence, the question, what must we do to be saved? And, of course, Peter's answer, be baptized. I will give unto thee, now this is quoting Jesus, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bind in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16 and verse 19. No human being ever had scriptural authority to say this because no human being ever had scriptural authority to originate a church. This could only be said authoritatively by him who, was, who has all authority in heaven and on earth. The founder of the scriptural church Jesus Christ. Now, the, the New Testament church was not founded by John the Baptist because many religious religionists, by the way, the word religion comes from the Greek, I think it's religion, and it means to have a relationship or maybe be related to somebody or uh, whether it's divine or human, it means relationship. John was dead at the time Jesus promised to build the church. In Matthew 14.10, we read of the execution of John, and he, 
Herod, the guy that executed him, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. Bear in mind that John was dead as we in turn, as we turn two chapters and come to Christ's promise in Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. Okay? That goes back to the thought that I thought I was baptized and saved because the first time I was baptized, it was almost like being baptized by John the Baptist. Nothing taken away from Dr. Scott because Jesus Christ himself uh, paid a great compliment to John the Baptist as the voice crying in the wilderness that he, Jesus Christ, was to come, the Messiah. I will build my church, will build, is future tense. John was dead and the establishment of the church was in the future. John the Baptist was a great man and, and a scriptural word. He was a forerunner who went, I said all that. Anyway, this comes to why I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I have been baptized. I have come to walk in newness of life, continuing to reckon that old man dead and receive the Holy Spirit. And I've been added to the Church of Christ since 1985. This is the second in a series of why I am a member of the Church of Christ. Also, in the scripture saying, in 1 Peter, Sanctify in your hearts Christ as Lord, being ready always to give answer to every man that asketh you a reason concerning the hope that is in you, yet with meekness and fear. I fear that I may not see Jesus Christ face to face and have him tell me, welcome in, thou good and faithful servant. That's what it means, in meekness and in fear. Fearing the Lord and the power of the Lord, but respect as a person would respect authority and a father figure. Well, that's all. My name is Myron Kent. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these uh, series, but I do want to make the point across that it's very, very important that once you begin your walk with Jesus Christ to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Therefore, you will be saved. Thank you.